Since the infestation of Lake Mead and the spread of uh, quagga and zebra mussels in the western United States, we have seen numerous state, federal, and tribal agencies, along with municipalities and power producers, uh, step up their efforts in, in measures to prevent the further spread of, of, these, of these deadly mussels. Uh, one of the things that uh, it, it became apparent early on is that all of these different agencies needed to have some type of coordination. And there are uh, several avenues that that is helping. Um, at the Pacific States Marine Fisheries Commission, one of the things that we do is work with our member states and other agencies uh, with funding from groups like the Fish and Wildlife Service and Bonneville Power Administration to make sure that we're not duplicating effort and to make sure that we're co coordinating our prevention efforts. Um, this goes from everything from education to monitoring to watercraft decontamination stations. And um, we've had, I think, some pretty good luck in getting all the agencies at the table. Um, there are also several, several other um, groups that, are, that we uh, work with on these coordination efforts. And this, this includes the 100th Meridian Initiative and also the Western Regional Panel on Aquatic Nuisance Species. Um, it can't be emphasized enough that the prevention efforts in the West and in the United States for quagga and zebra mussels is a, a very costly task and we certainly don't have enough money to be able to address all our concerns. However, um, that being said, by working together, we're able to stretch our limited funding and uh, hopefully stop further spread of these dangerous mussels. One of the really uh, issues surrounding the quagga zebra mussel expansion in the West has been the cooperation amongst different groups that sometimes in natural resource issues have not seen eye to eye. Um, in quagga and zebra mussel prevention, we have cooperation from groups like, and as diverse as, the Bonneville Power Administration, irrigators, tribal interests, fishermen, municipalities, water users, and all of these groups have uh, the same concern in mind, and that is stopping the spread of quagga and zebra mussels. So this has been really a, a breath of fresh air when it comes to natural resource management. One of the very important issues on the quagga and zebra mussel prevention efforts in the West is that we must be proactive. Um, we cannot wait for these things to show up. We have seen throughout the United States, Lake Mead, Great Lakes, and other areas that once they do show up, it costs everybody a lot of money. It is therefore um, critical that prevention efforts are taken proactively to keep these mussels out of our water bodies. By doing that, we buy time, and every year that we buy of not having an infestation, we're saving the region millions of dollars for water users, ratepayers, fishermen, and the general public. Because there are limited resources to deal with the quagga and zebra mussel issue, it is very important that recreational water users, especially boat owners, realize their role in preventing the spread. This means that every citizen must follow what we have been teaching of clean, drain, and dry your boat. One of the issues that's critical in the fight against quagga and zebra mussels is cooperation by the general public, especially the watercraft, watercraft users, in cleaning, draining, and drying their boat. One of the critical issues that um, the general public can get involved with on prevention of zebra and quagga mussels is taking actions themselves. Um, this means cleaning, draining, and drying your boats. Government agencies do not have enough money to do everything that is necessary to prevent quagga and zebra mussels from spreading in the West. Therefore, all citizens, especially those that use recreational watercraft, fishermen, boaters, these folks have got to be on board and doing everything they can to stop the spread.